The first thunderstorm of the year took place a couple hours ago up here in Boston, but we're ready to play a little baseball. The Phils are wrapping up this long road trip and also trying to end this six-game losing streak. The Phillies fans are still here in numbers. Tonight is game two up here at Fenway before these two teams head back to Philadelphia for a quick two-game series. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Ben Davis. Last night, the Phillies lost in extra innings. There was a bright spot offensively. Howie Kendrick made a couple errors defensively, but offensively, he didn't make any errors at all. In fact, since he's come off the disabled list, he has picked up right where he left off. Yeah, he's such a consummate professional. He's done it with power. He's done it with average. He's done it with on-base percentage. Take a look at some of the knocks he had last night. He's just not hitting the ball to the right side to advance runner. No, he's driving the baseball. He's got that swing hone so much that he can do any whatever he wants right now at home plate. The speed, I didn't see this coming with the speed, but three <laughs> stolen bases last night and the first one of third base for the Philadelphia Phillies this season. He really is putting together quite a nice season. Well, and it's also adding a little influence to this young team. He's hitting 435 on this road trip, which includes the five stolen bases and the two doubles. He's not an extra base machine, but he is giving the Phillies some stability in the middle of this lineup. All right, on the top of the lineup for the Boston Red Sox, the stability is being added by Mookie Betts. He was fantastic last night, not only offensively. Pete McCadden said, I was more impressed with his defense last night. Yeah, we just came from Atlanta two trips ago, and Ender Inciarte, he can beat you in a myriad of ways. Same way with Mookie Betts. He can beat you with his bat, he can beat you with his speed, and he can also beat you with his glove. Last night, very good offensively with those three doubles. But take a look at our GMC Precision Plays. Fly ball right now off the bat of Tommy Joseph. He goes and gets it, saves a run. That was an excellent play, but this play really could have been a game changer. Does not let this ball get to the wall in right center. Gets it in quickly. Also prevents Tommy Joseph from scoring from first base. He just can beat you in so many different ways. Now, this is obviously his second straight year of solid offensive numbers. Last year, 289 with 76 hits. He had many more home runs, five more home runs at this point last season after 60 games. But his average at 276, his hits at 67, they're rising as well. And from the top of the order for this Red Sox team, 21 multi-hit games. That is doing the job. So the Phils will try to quiet him tonight. It is the final game of this two-game series. Ben Lively looking for his second Major League victory. David Price on the hill for the Red Sox, making his fourth start of the year. We'll get you ready for tonight's game when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. By Toyota. Find your favorite model today. Toyota, let's go places. By Citizens Bank, official bank of the Phillies. Visit citizensbank.com. And by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com.
Park we get set for the second game of this very quick two game series interesting to see the reaction for David Price as he was introduced tonight uh, because of all the issues he's had over the last week or so including a very bad outing against the New York Yankees uh, and it was a nice reaction from the fans here at Fenway Park. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup brought to you by Xfinity Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Well the Phillies lineup is pretty much the same except for Michael Saunders and Cameron Rupp. They're in the lineup tonight. Saunders the DH Cameron Rupp is the catcher batting eighth. Odubel Herrera is riding an 11 game hitting streak. Daniel Nava's been hot. So is Howie Kendrick. And that's all good signs for the Phils as they face the left hander. David Price now 31 years old. Remember the Phillies saw him in the 2008 World Series and probably should have seen him a whole lot more but did not pitch that much out of the bullpen. One and one with an ERA of 5.29 and just three starts. It's coming off the disabled list. He had a bum elbow in spring training, which was somewhat concerning, but his fastball is back to the mid 90s, Ben. It is, and he'll sit right about 94, change curve cutter. 2016, good win loss record, but the ERA above four. This is his first start this season at Fenway 2017. Yeah, last year, lifetime, he's 15 and four. Here at Fenway Park. Let's take a look at the Nissan keys to tonight's ball game. Well, Tom, the price is not right inside to these righties. They have to get David Price out of their kitchen. He will dominate the inside part if you allow him. And Ben Lively, make the righties beat you away. There's such a, a vast uh, amount of real estate here at right center field that if you let him beat you away, it might be a little tougher th for them to get it out of the yard. All right, so Dubal Herrera will lead things off. Odubel hitting 258 with five homers and 25 runs batted in. And the first pitch is slapped to left field. Benintendi is there. And one pitch, one away here in the first inning. I think if you're a pitcher, you're sitting there thinking, huh, I'll take that all day long. Uh, Daniel Nava is coming up. Did all of his damage last night from the left side of the plate. And now getting a chance to bat right handed against Price. This lineup the Phillies have is collectively hitting 158 with 22 strikeouts against David Price. Nava is two for 20 against him in his career. And a fastball in there, it's 0 and 1. Price will work quickly, so Nava taking his time getting back in the box. No balls, one strike to Nava. Three for six in last night's game with a double. Walked into Pete McCannon's office today. Said, "How about that play that Nava made down the left field line?" He said, "Honestly, I didn't see it till after the game because I am so shielded in the dugout. I can't see the left field line." He said I didn't realize that it was that tight and that he had to reach back once he jumped in the air. You're not going to make very many catches in foul territory down the lines here. One ball one strike to Nava. And that's on the outside corner one and two. Nava has an on base percentage of 483 which is 10th best. In the National League. He does not qualify uh, with the league leaders. Over to third base. Rutledge waits for it. Playing third again for Pablo Sandoval. Two outs here in the first inning. Well, here is that play that we're talking about from last night. Get, gets over to that wall and doesn't realize that there's not a lot of foul territory there. But the wherewithal to get that ball back to Howie Kendrick to double up Ben Attendee. Being excited about it. Ben Attendee, not so much. No. Aaron Altair swings at the first pitch and hits it out toward right center field. And Jackie Bradley makes the catch. Well, this turns out to be a rather quick first inning for David Price. Up to the bottom of the first, Phillies nothing, and the Red Sox coming up.
Carroll's team last night won it in 11 innings, their second straight four-hour-plus game. Let's take a look at his lineup brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. Boogie Betts leads it off in right field. Once again, he was four for five in last night's ball game. Ben Attendi was three for five with two RBIs. That is now five for his last 13. Vasquez does the catching today. And they will face right-hander Ben Lively, one and one with an ERA of 2.57 in his first couple starts. Able to throw seven innings in those two starts each time out. Scan report on Ben. He'll sit about 92. Change curve slider. Predominantly will throw fastball, curveball. About 85% of the time you're going to get one or the other. Averaging 13.8 pitches per inning, which you love to see. Boogie Betts leads it off and he swings at the first pitch and he pops it toward the third base line. Bronco is under it and makes the catch one away. Wow. That was a high one. Yeah, it took a little while to get down. So Betts is retired and now Dustin Pedroia. Well, last night was credited with only his second career walk off hit. His average up to 298 with a couple home runs, 25 runs batted in. Ball runs inside. Pedroia finished with two hits in last night's game. Both hits came in his final two at bats. Now that's where he sits as far as interleague uh, average goes, and he's going to add to it. So he's aboard with one out here in the first. Here is the big hit in last night's ball game. Yeah, Finez got him down 0-2, tries to force Seamer up and away, just not able to get to the spot. Aaron Altair, excellent throw home. Andrew not, not able to hold on to it. But Marrero would have beaten it anyway. Very excited here in Boston last night. Said I had some big men running after me. I wasn't going to let them catch me. <laughs> Here's Xander Bogarts. He's 0 for his last 10. His average at 318. He was hitless in five at bats last night. Man, a fastball in there. It's 0 1. Bogarts with 21 extra base hits. Batting average uh, on balls in play. A 377 clip. Judge, he is leading all participants, hitting well over 400. On the outside oh. corner, one and two. Batting averages on balls in play measures how often. A ball in play goes for a hit. A ball is in play when the plate appearance ends in something other than a strikeout. That one is not going to end in a strikeout. It's going to go off the top of the scoreboard on the Green Monster. Barehanded by Naba, who fires to second, and Bogarts pulls in with a one out double. Second and third with one away. Naba played it well. We saw how well he played. Left field last night, knowing the Green Monster well. He said Bogarts was 0 for his last 10, but he gets a pitch up here. Shortens that swing. He knows it's off the Monster. Nava barehands this off the big green wall. He also knew that Pedroia was not going to advance past third, so he fired over to second base. Phillies will play the infield back with Mitch Moreland up. Orleans hit in seven consecutive games. I mentioned this last night. Look what he's done over his last 22 games, hitting 342. Breaking ball and it's 0 and 1. Does not get cheated. Are better with uh, runners on base, hitting well over three or hitting over 300 at 302. Hmm. One ball, 
one strike to Moreland. Ball down top. Must have been down just a little bit. Take a look at your GMC pitch cast. Just a little bit. Up a little bit, 92, and a swing and a miss. One and two. Good numbers with runners in scoring position. Lively's allowed four earned runs in 14 and a third innings so far. And now he's dealing with runners on second and third with one man down here in the bottom of the first. To the seats over the third base side. Good pitch. One into the second deck here at Fenway Park, and it remains one ball and two strikes. Things have cooled off a little bit because of the uh, thunderstorm that came through 76 degrees and a slight breeze, 13 miles an hour. 76, huh? That's what it says. Liar. Pretty good battle going on here with Moreland. Lively has uh, tightened the reins a little bit when runners are in scoring position. They're one for ten against him with runners in scoring position so far in his brief time in the big leagues. He's hoping that turns out to be one for twelve and they can get out of this inning. He has walked three with runners in scoring position. Trying to get him with a curveball. Now Rupp will go out and talk to Lively. Now is the theory here maybe wasting a pitch since he's fouled so many off just to try to change his eye level? I just bit? go higher than high or really bounce one. Trust your catcher right now because he's just in swing mode. Obviously thinks he can get to anything right now. So if you throw it just a, a tad out of the strike zone one way or another you might be able to get him to swing and miss. Exactly. This will be the eighth pitch of this at bat. Just I've done that as a hitter, just thinking you get in swing mode, you just keep going, 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 thinking you can hit anything. Oh, there you go. He tried to go away a little bit more. Up a little frustrated there. Change it. I don't know how that ball was off the plate by foot. Have to go in at the belt here. Outside, two and two. But he tried. Cam giving that target up and in. What you try to avoid from a pitcher's standpoint is not to just say, all right, here you go, try to hit it. I mean, you've got to keep trying to battle here to get the out. Win the battle. Unfortunately, Lively doesn't have upper 90s to kind of blow him away, but he can pitch his way through this at bat. I still think hard into the belt's the way to get him. We're going to set up outside, and that one is going to go toward the left field line by Moreland. It is a foul ball. And we'll do it again. A 
11 pitches, seven foul balls. Just have to believe if you're Ben Lively, say, you know what, Moreland? You're not better than me right now. I will execute and get you out. And it hits him. And that'll load the bases up. Mitch Moreland had been three for 17 in the first inning of games. Could get a nice round of applause. That was a heck of an at bat. And since he won it by getting on base, you give him the nod. And now Andrew Benintendi will be the batter for the Red Sox. He homered last night. Back to three hits in last night's game. Minimize the damage. Should be Ben Lively's new objective right now. Bases loaded, good hitter up. Get out of here with no runs would be the best. But even minimize that to one run. You take that any day of the week. Oh. one to Ben Attendee out of the University of Arkansas. He has nine home runs, which is fourth among rookies in the American League. Boy, Trey Mancini's really starting to climb with those home run totals. Mm -hmm. He's a big fella. And one strike. Just missed off the outside part of the plate. Those Orioles are going to need Mancini to really pick it up here. With saw Chris Davis going to go on the DL with an oblique oblique strain. And Manny Machado continues to struggle with yeah. his batting average. Two balls, one strike. This is a 22 pitch inning so far. Ninety-two. A little cut on it, and it's two and two. Leading you to believe that the Phillies are going to be in their bullpen rather early tonight. The Red Sox have the bases loaded. Pedroia, Bogarts, Moreland. And there's one man down. Hanley Ramirez waiting on deck. And the count three and two to Benintendi. And low ball four. That'll force in a run. It's one nothing. Boston on top. On the mounds. Here comes Bob McClure. Cameron sets that target up, down and away. Lively just overthrows it, yanks it down and in. He's missed on a number of the, the targets that that Cameron Rupp has put down. So Bob McClure just giving him a chance to catch a breather. And hopefully get a ground ball here with Hanley Ramirez coming up. First three hitters he threw seven pitches to the last two he has thrown 18 pitches. That at bat to more than I think just gas Ben Lively here in the first inning. It's hot, it's humid. Now 
outside 1 and 0. Henley Ramirez has hit it to seven double plays so far this season. Nice to see him hit it to number eight right here. Leaders in home runs against the Phils. David Wright leads the way. Phillies will see Beltron later on this season. And they've seen enough of Ryan Zimmerman and Jason Worth. One ball, one strike to Ramirez. Back toward the middle. Waiting for it is Kendrick. Flips to Galvis for one. Over to first, and it's in time to get Ramirez. A 4 6 3 double play, and it wasn't easy. And Lively works out of this inning by allowing just the one run. The Red Sox are going to take a peek at it to see if they should challenge it. Boy, it looked like Freddie Galvis made the throw over there in time. John Farrell has his hand out, telling Jim Reynolds to hold on. There's one without a problem, and now the throw is in time to get Hanley Ramirez. Wow, what a play. 4-6-3 double play. Red Sox leave a couple. They do get a run. We'll go to the second. 1-0 Boston on top. Uh, worked a 1 2 3 first inning. He threw just six pitches, and now he'll face Howie Kendrick. Kendrick was three for six last night with three stolen bases. He picked up one RBI. And the first pitch of this inning is taken for ball one. Howie's had the most success against uh, David Price, six for 30. That Price is now 31 years old. And nine and three last year here at Fenway, as Ben pointed out, 15 and four lifetime. Making his first start this season here at Fenway. First two starts off the disabled list, he was fine. Last start after he went through a, a profanity lace tirade on Wednesday night at Yankee Stadium, he pitched on Thursday and did not pitch well against the Yankees. In fact, when five innings, eight hits, six earned runs. He walked four. It was a 9 1 loss by the Red Sox. Over to third base. That's foul. It remains two and two.
pace has kind of slowed down here in the second. He was so quick in the first inning. I mean, he did get the first out on one pitch, but a little, more, a little bit more deliberate against Howie Kendrick. It'll be Kendrick, Tommy Joseph, and Mike Franco. And ball four. So Kendrick draws a walk. Time now for our State Farm double play. We just saw it. It was started by Howie Kendrick. Excellent play here. I thought this ball was going to get up the middle. Howie Kendrick in the right spot, and Freddie just being Freddie. Four, six, three, inning, inning double play. Ben Lively needed that. The Phillies needed that. Escape out of that with just the one run. That is your State Farm double play. State Farm here to help life go right. We'll see if Tommy Joseph can help make things pay. Among Phillies hitters all time, Tommy Joseph has the second highest batting average in interleague play for one season. Tommy hitting 417 this year in interleague play. He's hitting eight games overall, hitting at 257 now. Doug Landville back in 1991 hit 419 for the Phillies. Marlon Anderson back in 2001. He has the third highest batting average for a season uh, for the Phillies, hitting 400. Those are Tommy's overall numbers, which include last year. One ball, no strikes to Joseph. And now 2 0. See Price out of the stretch, not much different than his windup. Starts in the same position. Just about it, just out of his windup, he just there's a quick little jab step back, and that's it. Down the right field line on the run is Mookie Betts, and it's going to land in foul territory. Two and one to Tommy Joseph. Down the left field line, it's going to hook into the seats. Oh man, look out! Coming in hot. The Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Anna May Antis of West Grove, Pennsylvania. Phillies at home run in today's ball game. Anna May will hit $200. Introduce or win $200. Introducing the new signature crafted recipes at McDonald's. Oh, I'm loving it. Good luck, Anna May. Tommy Joseph seen the ball well off David Price. I think how he's going to be off and running here. Wheels in motion. Yeah, Pete said he's been trying to take more chances recently because of the losing streak. Just figured, what the heck, I might as well. Vasquez can throw behind the plate. He does not go, and the pitch swung on and missed. And Tommy is the first strikeout victim. And one out here in the second. And that brings Mike Franco up. And good thing how he doesn't go. A little cutter there. Not a ton of movement. That's what you want that late life on that cutter. Pete and Matt Stairs were optimistic uh, with Mike Franco's swings yesterday. 
He has three hits in his last two games. In fact, he has swung the bat a little bit better on this road trip, more so in Atlanta than in St. Louis. Toward the hole, and that'll sneak into left field a base hit for Michael Franco. So the first hit of the night puts runners on first and second now for the Phils. Well, the Red Sox and the Phils will head down to Philadelphia after this ball game. Two games at Citizens Bank Park tomorrow and Thursday. Both games are scheduled for 7:05. You can get tickets right now by going to Phillies.com. You can also go onto the website, check out information on what's going on around the ballpark during these two games. Michael Saunders getting a chance to play one for his last 17 and 0 for his last 15. He and David Price were teammates in Toronto for a short period of time. Michael was hurt for most of the year. So his numbers with runners in scoring position. Two balls and one strike. David Price overall 122 wins and 66 losses and an ERA of 3.24. Really has had a very nice career. And he's making an awful lot of money pitching here for the Red Sox. The strange thing is, is that he can opt out after the 2018 season. Some folks think there's a chance he will. I don't know how he could. He's scheduled to make $32 million after the 2018 season for three years. Inside, three and one. That's having a, an awful lot of faith in yourself. That $217 million contract, the world's ninth largest sports contract. That's just amazing. Time you could buy a boat with that. Sure can. You could buy the whole fleet. <laughs> Ball four. So that'll load up the bases. And now Carl Willis will head out to the mound to talk to David Price. Two walks in the inning. And Cameron Rupp will be the batter. Well, both of these pitchers have a little trouble with their command to start this ball game. This seems to be missing up and away to right. He's up and into lefties. You just saw against Saunders. Just that means his his right shoulder, his lead shoulder is flying open, dragging his arm behind, not giving his arm a chance to catch up. Or well, stuck in the office uh, later this week. No problem. Catch the Phil's game right from your desk. Live, live stream every CSN game on the go. The NBC Sports app and CSNPhilly.com. Well, Cameron Rupp is hitless in his last 13 at bats. However, seven for his last 13 with runners in scoring position. And he 
He takes a bit outside. Bryce looked like he was trying to buy that one. Cameron was one of the only guys allowed to hit on the field today before they tarped it. <laughs> it was fast. It was unbelievable. He's in the cage. Next thing you know, they're rolling that tarp out. Price has been sitting about 90 91 right there. He bumped it up to 95 toward the outer edge of the plate. Backdoor cutter there. Throw that cutter about 25% of the time. Backdoor to righties, front door to lefties, and throw it in at the belt on righties. And he stays alive with a foul ball. See it again. I caught a little bit more plate than he would have liked. Let's see Cam just shorten up here. Trust his strength. Trust his bat speed. Put it in play. Good things will happen. During this losing streak, are hitting 229 as a team. They've only scored 14 runs. That includes five last night. It's been a very quiet run for the Phils. One ball, two strikes to Cameron Ruff. And he lines it down the left field line. Foul. And we will do it again. Tell you, we've been to this ballpark a number of times. You played in this ballpark. Some of the foul balls that these two games, I mean, they are right on these fans. And there was a cat down the left field line that was trying to catch it and it went right past yeah. his head. A lady yesterday sitting up in the green monster seats, not watching. Home run went right, was right past her head. It's during BP. Stays alive again. Taps it foul. It's a good time to have a mound visit, Tom. Huh? Well, he threw only six pitches in the first inning. So he's at 27 here in the second. Like Jared Eikhoff went six innings, allowed seven hits and four runs for the second time this year. He was staked to a four run lead in the first inning. Left with some cramping uh, in the back of his shoulder. He was going to be out of the game anyway. Said he was fine today. Four runs, but only three were earned. Fifth time this year the Phillies uh, have had a three run lead that they have lost a three run lead or more that they have lost. Two and two. Down the right field line Mookie Betts is there makes the catch Kendrick was late to get back to tag. 
And he will stay at third, so two outs. I don't know if he would have gone anyway. Rookie Betts is a very good arm, and he just showed it off right there. It's a shame because that was a very good at bat by Cameron Rupp. Hits the ball hard to right field. It's a tough read either way for Howie. He doesn't know quite for sure. Just gets caught up in the middle. Freddie Galvis the hitter. Freddie 0 for 5 in yesterday's game. Upstairs 1 and 0. Not to make excuses for Howie, but I think he anticipated that ball was going to drop in front of Betts. Mm -hmm. And he obviously had to make sure that he was heading to the plate. If he had to do it over again, he probably would have been a little shorter off that third base bag to then tag up and go. 2 0 to Galvis. Freddie hits it out to right field and waiting for it is Mookie Betts. So David Price is going to work out of this jam despite the fact that he had to spend a lot of pitches to do so. No runs one hit three men left for the fills. We'll head to the bottom of the second Ben lively back to work. Com at bat mobile app stay connected to the game's best players all season long on game day live game video highlights radio broadcast stats news and more download MLB.com at bat today it's your number one app for live baseball Red Sox lead at one nothing the Phillies uh, could not get a run home with the bases loaded and one man down in the top of the second inning so now the Red Sox go back to work offensively with Jackie Bradley Josh Rutledge and Christian Vasquez against Ben Lively who starts Bradley off with a strike. Bradley hitting 242 he hits that one well to left field Nava going back it's going to be off the green monster and it's over the head of Nava backed up well by Odubel Herrera. And that's the seventh double of the year for Jackie Bradley. Sinker that's up. Using that monster to his advantage. Crazy carom off the wall. Good backup though by Adubel. I think if he's not there, Bradley's going to go to third base. I would agree with that. Christian. 
Rutledge 0 for 3 in last night's ball game. Pablo Sandoval came on to a pinch hit for him. And Sandoval picked up a base hit in his second at bat. He also had an error over third base. Some folks thought that John Farrell would start Sandoval tonight. Well, he's decided to sit him again. Bouncer right side. Now Kendrick is up with it. Bradley goes to third. Rutledge gives himself up. 4 3 on the put out. One away. Vasquez is coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murphy. All right, thank you very much, Tom. Well, we got word today about the severity of Cesar Hernandez's injury, told uh, by Pete McCannon this afternoon that it looks like Cesar Hernandez will be out about six weeks with that left oblique strain that uh, is one of those injuries that just takes time to heal. So they're expecting about six weeks for Cesar Hernandez. So what does that mean for the long term or at least the short term of the long term for these Phillies this season. You know right now Howie Kent will get the bulk of the playing time at second base. Daniel Navas getting his share of time out in the outfield. But uh, Pete McCannon was asked today do you expect that to change now that you have a definitive word on just how long Cesar is going to be out. It's not going to be you know six seven eight days. It's going to be a significant period of time. Do you anticipate maybe perhaps bringing up someone from the minor leagues. He said well honestly he hasn't had a chance to talk to Matt Klentek yet. He and his staff very busy with the draft. But when they get back to Philadelphia Pete said he is anxious to hear what Matt Klentek has to say about their different options. There's certainly they could bring up a young infielder a guy like Scott Kingery who's who's uh, doing very well down in Reading or they could decide to bring up an outfielder from the Lehigh Valley. You've got a couple of different options. Uh, you know Cam Perkins is down there. You've got uh, Dylan Cousins down there. Uh, Nick Williams as well. So any of those guys and perhaps uh, you'd move Howie back into uh, or keep Howie at second base and play them in the outfield. So lots of decisions to be made. But uh, the most important thing to know is that Cesar is going to be out for a while. So now they are going to have to decide which route they're going to take. They could just stick with what they have right now uh, with the guys that they're playing with right now. So it'll be interesting to see guys. Uh, it, it is a shame that it's going to be that long for Cesar who thought it was going to be a very short period of time as Vasquez takes up high but you, you never know with the oblique strains if you've never done it before and that's on his left side so every time he swings right hander every time he throws a ball you're going to feel it if it was on his right side you would feel it if you were to swing left handed. Well think about how long Howie Kendrick was out he kept having setback after setback. Two balls two strikes to Vasquez. And he lines it down the right field line that'll be in for a base hit it's going to scoot off the wall played well by Altair but Vasquez is on his way to second base and he'll be there with his 10th double of the year it's an RBI it brings Bradley home it's two nothing Boston. A short swing there by Vasquez. There's a reason the man came in today's ball game hitting 318. Continues to impress here at the big league level. Get them over, get them in. Good fundamental baseball by the Red Sox. Back to the top of the order for Mookie Bats, who swung at the first pitch his first time up. Bats last night had his third four hit game of the season. He is hitting right around 400 in interleague games. Popped up again by Kel Franco, Freddie Galvis. It's Galvis who makes the call, puts it away. And two outs here in the second. Droya who singled his first time up and came around to score the first run for the Red Sox. Outside 1 0. Showed you that graphic before about Pedroia where he, he ranks as far as interleague batting averages go. He is fourth on the list right behind Mike Piazza. Larry Walker and Aaron Miles from the Colorado Rockies is the all time leader at 367. Hey. Would not have anticipated Aaron Miles being the leader. There 
it is. Darren Erstad is number five at 333. You can also punt the football better than the other guys, too. Bouncer left side. Galvis has it. Back hands and sets and throws. And Lively works out of it here in the second, allows just the one run of oh, the RBI double by Vasquez. We'll move to the third. Red Sox lead it 2 0. Log on to phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. The question is who holds the Red Sox record, Ben, for most gold gloves by an infielder? Red Sox record for most gold gloves by an infielder. The answer will be revealed in just a little bit. Hmm. Top half of the third inning. And the Phillies trail at 2 nothing. Odubel Herrera will lead it off. Odubel flied out to left field. One pitch his first time up. Raised his arms as if that pitch was inside, but it was actually toward the outer edge of the plate. One ball, no strikes. Just setting him up, Tom. That time it was inside. David Price is 14 and 12 lifetime in interleague games with an ERA of 3.41. Last year he won four games, lost two against the National League while pitching for the Red Sox. Oh. We'll take it all the way. It's two and one. I know you need base runners, especially at the top, lead off the inning. I'd rather see a double swing at that pitch because you know, 2 0 lead off the inning, you know exactly what you're going to get from David Price. Wax that one foul, it's 2 and 2. He doesn't want to fall behind 3 0 and have to battle back from there. So now it's 2 2. Now you don't know what could happen. But 2 0, you know exactly what you're going to get. With the highest batting average in the National League during the month of June at 432. We will see Paul Goldschmidt this weekend when the Diamondbacks come to town. Two balls, two strikes to Herrera. Inside, three and two. And ball four. So uh, that is the third walk issued by Price. And it'll bring Daniel Nava to the plate. 
Well, last night the Phillies had a very ineffective Rick Porcello that they were dealing with and they did have the lead against him. And tonight you got David Price who's already walked three. He now has 10 walks in 19 innings of work. You mentioned he had four against the Yankees in his last start. I still think he's just trying to get the cobwebs out. You know, no spring training for him. Porcello, who uh, did not get a decision in last night's ball game, six innings, ten hits, and five runs. The game which his team eventually won. The ball's in one strike. And now the checks his swing. They'll peel. And no swings. There's Jim Reynolds. It'll even the count up at one and one. You think he went there? I did not. I thought he did. We'll take a look. A side view. You were correct, Tom. I know David Price can throw hard, has thrown hard over his career. He's a guy that I wouldn't have minded facing because everything is hard. You know, his fastball's hard, his cutter's hard, even his slider. He'll throw it pretty hard. Well, I remember back in 2008 when he was, you know, just a pup with the Tampa Bay Rays. He was in the bullpen during the World Series, and there were a lot of people that thought they would use him a little bit more because, of, you know, the, the Ryan Howards of this world, the Chase Sutleys of this world. Put Victorino to the right side of the plate, Rollins to the right side of the plate. But Joe Madden didn't use him as much as he probably could have. But you can see him lurking in the uh, the bullpen. The Phillies didn't know a whole lot about him right. either because he had been drafted a year earlier in the first round. And at that point, he was throwing in the high 90s. Yes. Big guy, six foot five, 215 pounds. Two and two to Nava. He's really in a rush to get this game moving, are they, Tom? No, I think Nava's doing this on purpose because of the way Price was starting the game at his tempo, but he certainly isn't as fast as he was in the first inning. And with a runner at first base, two balls, two strikes. So we're going to miss. Nava strikes out, second strikeout for David Price. Saturday July 8th when the San Diego Padres are in town that's a 405 first pitch and all fans coming to the ballpark will receive the Mike Schmidt bobble figurine presented by Toyota. Get your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Aaron Altair fly to center field his first time up. So he is 0 for 1. Saying today that he would like 
his base runners to be a little more aggressive. He said that this year more than other years uh, he has found the times to the plate to be a little quicker for a lot of the pitchers. Phillies have stolen 26 bases which is 22nd in all of Major League Baseball. Price has only made a couple of throws over to first base in these first couple of innings and does not have the quintessential lefty move. There goes Oduble. Pitches it high in the air, deep down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone. It is a fair ball home run over the green monster. And the Phillies are on the board. They've just tied this ball game up at two. As Aaron Altair is in his 10th home run of the season. We may be here at Fenway, but that ball is going out of any ballpark in the league. Ball was KILT kill, Tom. Well, he hit it a long way. It went on to Lansdowne. I mean, it was. It was a pretty good swing. Goodness. And this is one of my keys. Get him out from inside. You cannot let David Price live inside. Well, Howie Kendrick now the batter. Short swing. Watch your head in there, Aaron. Watch your head. <laughs> yeah, they've made these dugouts a little bigger, but they haven't made them taller. No, they haven't. I learned that lesson the hard way yesterday. Altair now nine for 29 on this road trip. One one pitches line sharply one hot pick by Bogarts throws out Howie Kendrick get it right on the nose two outs and Tommy Joseph is the batter Howie had a good at bat his first at bat work price for a walk this one just hits right at Bogarts good play. Tommy uh, struck out his first time up. Swing and a miss. Ball foul past the third base bag. And by the way, that home run has made a winner out of Anime Antis of West Grove, Pennsylvania. She won $200. Compliments to the McDonald's home run jackpot and Aaron Altair. Way to go, Anime. Nice to give out some cash up here at Fenway. One and two to Tommy Joseph. Strike three called on the outside corner. He went with a cutter. Uh, Aaron Altair has tied this ball game up, though. A 410 foot home run down the left field line. A two run shot. So we move to the bottom of the third inning here at Fenway Park with the Phillies two and the Red Sox two.
your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Valle Honda dealer. Visit DelValleHondaDealers.com and buy WB Mason. Who bought WB Mason for fast, free delivery? Nobody does it better. Philly fans feeling a little bit better about themselves after Aaron Altair's two run home run. We're now tied at two as we go to the bottom of the third. And it will be Xander Bogarts. Mitch Moreland. To lead it off for the Red Sox. The first pitch is in there. It's 0 and 1. Red Sox are currently four games out in the American League East with a record of 35 and 28. John Farrell's team uh, knows there's so many games left against the American League East, there's plenty of time. Fly ball right center field. Aaron Altair says he has it. Now Oduble makes the call and the catch. So what a way. Tampa is 34 and 32. I think again they're they're a surprising team. And considering the fact that Kiermaier is hurt, mm -hmm. Toronto is finally getting close to the 500 mark after having a terrible start to the season. You mentioned the fact the Orioles may lose Chris Davis, who's going to be on the disabled list. That's a tough guy to lose, even with all the strikeouts. He's always one swing away, isn't he? It's more of a takes outside, one and zero. Oh. Well, they certainly have got a big boost from this guy. The Red Sox at one point. Or rumored to uh, be in the mix for Edwin Encarnacion. Moreland crushes one to deep right center field, and it is gone. His ninth home run of the year. He's now hit in eight consecutive games. Goodness. You don't see very many go over that 420 sign up into the stands. So far, it's been a bargain at one year five point five million dollars for Mitch Moreland. The Red Sox are back on top. It's a three two game. Fastball up. That swing not nearly as hard as his first at bat. We fouled off numerous pitches. Here's Ben Attendee who walked and drove in a run his first time. Say it's a bargain compared to the three years and 60 million dollars that Edwin Encarnacion signed for. Encarnacion does have 12 home runs for the Indians and 26 runs batted in. One and two to Benintendi. Sometimes you get lucky with some of the signings. Yeah. Sometimes a change of scenery just really helps a, play, a ball player out. Three and two. Billy Ramirez uh, waits on deck. Down the left field line, slicing toward the corner, and it is off the monster. Benintendi runs well, and he glides to second base. That's his ninth double of the year. And both of these teams are just peppering that green monster in this series. Why not? Really is something. I honestly, the amount of games that I played here, I just don't remember this many balls going off that wall. You can use that to your advantage. Whew, a lot of hits off that monster. Ramirez, a 4 6 3 double play, is last time up. One. 
this 0 and 2. Loses his hat and he is strikeout victim numero uno for Ben Lively. Two great postgame fireworks shows are coming up, sponsored by Xfinity at Citizens Bank Park. Thursday, July 6th, when the Pirates are in town, that's a 6.05 first pitch. And then Friday, July 7th, when the Padres are here, that's a 6.35 first pitch. Fireworks will take place after the game. Go to Phillies.com to purchase your tickets. So now two outs. And here's Jackie Bradley. Dances out of the way of that first pitch. It was a heck of a slider he threw to Hanley Ramirez. Heck of a slider. Yeah, excellent command of the pitch. Shallow right field. Kendrick goes back. Altair comes in. And that'll do it for the Red Sox here in the third. But they've scored single runs in each inning so far. Home run by Moreland gives them the lead as we go to the fourth. Deliver unmatched quality and their jet intelligent toner cartridges print up to one third more pages. Get yours from who? The WB Mason today and experience the difference. Nobody beats WB on HP. Three to two, Red Sox on top as we go to the top half of the fourth inning. And then Mike Franco will lead things off. Franco reached on a single his first time up. Two pitches for David Price, 61 through three innings. Inside again, and it's now 2 0. Home we'll plate umpire today. Tonight is Stu Shorewater. Jim Reynolds is at first. Ryan Knight is at second. Lance Barrett is around at third.
good take right there. 2 0, you're thinking Price is going to challenge him. There's a change up down. Michael spits on it. And ball four, so he walks him on four pitches. And Michael Saunders is coming up. Let's go to Greg Murphy. Murph. All right, thanks, Tom. Well, we told you earlier that uh, Matt Klentak, Phillies general manager Matt Klentak, and his staff uh, very busy over the last couple of days, as all our staffs all over Major League Baseball. The Major League Baseball draft is happening this week. Uh, yesterday and today, the first 10 rounds are in the books, and uh, well, the Phillies have gotten themselves a handful of collegiate players. We told you about Adam Hazley yesterday, uh, the first round pick out of the University of Virginia, and Spencer Howard, the right handed pitcher out of Cal Poly, the first two picks. Connor Seabold was their first pick, to pick today, another college pitcher from uh, Cal State Fullerton. The University of Houston product Jake Shinder, a third baseman and shortstop, went in the fourth round. The only high schooler in the first 10 for the Phils, Ethan Lindau, a left handed pitcher, goes at number five, a pair of shortstop. Stop Dalton Guthrie and Nick Matone uh, coming in at six and seven. Jordani Mesquita, he's a left handed pitcher from Hazleton, Pennsylvania, 19 years old. Uh, he was selected number eight by the Phils. Then Jack Zollner, he's an infielder, mostly the corner infields, first and third. And then Connor Brogdon, a right handed pitcher, rounds out the top 10. So nine collegiate players in the top 10 uh, picks for the Phils. So a uh, very interesting strategy for the Phils, thinking maybe some of these guys will get to the big leagues kind of quickly. Yeah, Connor Seaball is out of the mold of Thomas Eshelman uh, who is pitching so well for Lehigh Valley Eshelman also from Cal State Fullerton who the Phillies acquired in the uh, trade with the Houston Astros he is a control pitcher same as Seabold Seabold's uh, fastball tops out in the high 80s but his control is what attracted the Phillies to him One ball and no strikes to Cameron Rupp after Saunders popped out to third. What ball two strikes two fastballs in a row that cameras a bit tardy on. down on strikes so two outs and that is the fourth strikeout for David Price and that'll bring Freddie Galvez to the plate well, Murph, the Red Sox have a couple of guys that went very high uh, in their respective drafts Ben Intendi was the first round pick out of Arkansas David Price for the Tampa Bay Rays was a first round pick the first overall when he was selected first overall pick in 2007 that draft when you take a look you, you know it's always interesting to go back and look at drafts well the first round of that draft it produced a lot of big leaguers and a, and a handful of all stars as well David Price of course leads the list at number one how about Mike Moustakis went at number two to Kansas City Matt Wieters to the Orioles he's an all star he went number five Madison Bumgarner at number ten Nice pitch there and Jason Hayward and Devin Mezzarocco also on that list so uh, folks doing very well projecting the talent back in 2007 guys we forgot Philippe Almond he was number 11 by the Mariners Murph I did forget him <laughs> nice play by the third baseman Rutledge will move to the bottom of the fourth inning the Red Sox on top of the fills three to two.
Nissan. Shop choose Nissan.com and buy Jefferson Health. Call 800 Jeff now or visit JeffersonHealth.org. Last of the fourth inning, the Red Sox on top three to two. And Josh Rutledge will lead it off for the Sox. I think Christian Vasquez. And then the top of the order against uh, right hander Ben Lively, who's allowed three runs so far. He got Rutledge to ground out to second base his first time up. He's 0 for 1. Murph was mentioned the top 10 picks by the Phillies. Uh, there are a number of local kids that have been taken in the top 10 rounds. As Aaron Altair tracks this one down. We'll get the complete list as the draft unfolds, but uh, Denny Brady was selected by the Angels in the seventh round at Abuna High School and uh, Mercer County Community College. Hard throwing right hander who was scheduled to go uh, to Old Dominion. I'm not sure if he's going to do that. Deion Stafford from St. Joseph's, catcher from St. Joseph's, was also drafted today, drafted by the Pirates. Buddy Kennedy was uh, drafted in the fifth round by the Diamondbacks. So congratulations to all those guys uh, for getting a chance to go on and fulfill their dream of possibly being a major league ball player. Vasquez doubled his first time up and he takes inside one ball one strike. Time that was called for Vasquez. Now he's rocking the playoff beard. Like everybody else, he's trying to do anything he can to end this six game losing streak. He's coming in thick as a goatee, not much around the beard area. <laughs> Stairs. Vasquez, their top catching prospect, along with Blake Swihart, who was supposed to be in that deal a couple years ago. Possibly Cole Hamels coming to Boston. Swihart was the untouchable. Swihart is in Pawtucket, hitting the low 200s. Just over the Mendoza line. He has not evolved into the player that they anticipated. And I like what I see out of Vasquez. Now there's ball four. He draws a one out walk. And we'll spin back to the top of the order for Mookie Betts, who has popped up twice. Out to third. He's popped out to shortstop. Lively has rolled one double play ball. Let's see if he can roll another one here. Up and up and in. One ball, no strikes. Red Sox are fifth in Major League Baseball and hitting at 268. They're averaging 4.79 runs per game. Tied for 11th. Out towards second, smothered on one hop by Kendrick. There's one and two. Another 4 6 3 double play. This one a little more conventional. And Lively is through four innings, no runs, no hits, and no man left. We move to the fifth inning. Phillies trail it by one.
Bulls. It'll be the start of a three game series Wednesday by the way the 21st is Star Wars night a theme night ticket required. Phillies.com for more information and check out what that theme night information is all about. Get a chance to see uh, Ben dress up as with Chewbacca. Chewbacca. Right Chewbacca before he goes over to the studios. Do pre and post game show. Our director Ray Tipton dressing up as Obi Wan Kenobi. We're going to get John DeSangro, our associate producer. He's going to dress up as R2D2. We're going to stuff him into that that costume as Odubel Herrera takes a strike. It's 0 1. Odubel has fly to left field. He walked his last time and scored. One ball, two strikes. High fastball most likely set up that cutter slash slider in the dirt. He's going to go back in. A little dribbler out in front of the plate and it's foul. That one's pulled towards second base, gobbled up by Pedroia. And one away. That'll bring Daniel Nava to the plate. Have you checked out CSN's podcast from every offseason move the Eagles make to the Phil's next big hitter? CSN Podcast, have you covered? Take insider info with you wherever you go. Subscribe now on Apple, Google Play, or CSNPhilly.com. Is grounded out to third. He's also struck out. Well, he scored their two runs and the two run home run by Altair. They had the bases loaded in the second inning and were, una were unable to score. No strikes. Pedroia again, an easy hop. And a two outs. Now all tear. You know, most pitchers have a, some type of follow through. So a lefty would have a follow through down past his right kneecap. A righty would have a follow through down past his left kneecap. David Price, on the other hand, mm. zero. Zero follow through. There's no extension. It's just straight recoil. When he throws that fastball. The delivery. Say just a quick little jab step. He did a little bit more there, but in years past, he just throws it and just completely re recoils that left arm. That's something they're trying to get him to do a bit more. 
Well, they were a little concerned obviously when uh, he came up with the elbow issue in spring training where they thought it might be leading to Tommy John surgery. Very fortunate that it did not. Nothing structurally wrong in there. It was huge. Big sigh of relief for the Red Sox. One ball one strike. Somebody has decided to put a banner. On the green monster. Probably an inopportune time to do so. Probably not going to see the rest of this game unfortunately. Whatever message they were trying to get across. Probably not going to uncoil well enough. Not sure if that was planned out well. Yeah. One ball and one strike to Altair. One and two. Boom. And a strike three call. So Aaron goes down looking a one, two, three inning. Second one for David Price. He's retired six straight. We will move to the bottom of the fifth inning in a one run game. Citizens Bank Minor League Report. Citizens Bank, the official bank of the Phils. Visit CitizensBank.com. Well, the Phillies uh, organization has the best winning percentage in all of baseball ahead of the Yankees. So, have so many good prospects the Red Sox, the Diamondbacks, and the Dodgers. That's good to see. Certainly is optimism for the Phillies in their farm system. Hopefully some of that optimism will roll up here to the big leagues over the next couple of years. Lively will face Dustin Pedroia as we begin the bottom of the seven. And he takes outside one and oh. Pedroia has singled and scored. He's also grounded out to shortstop. So we get a miss one and one. Way Aaron Altair going back on it. Took a peek for a moment and makes the catch. But for a little guy, he does generate a lot of distance and a lot of power. That's exactly why it's one of my keys, though, that to make those righties beat you the other way. It's a giant ballpark. The right center, obviously, the pesky pole is short, but just huge out there. 
Dustin Bedroy, one thing he's never done is gotten cheated. <laughs> that is true. Xander Bogarts is one for two today, and he takes a strike. It's 0 and 1. Bogarts has an interesting hitting style where he kind of goes forward with most of his body. Sort of lunging, not toward the plate, but forward and toward the plate. Keeps those hands back, though. A liner to left field. It's going to make a loud noise. Nava, though, handles it and then bobbles it. That'll allow Bogarts to get to second base. That's an official scorer's nightmare or not, because. Now common sense would tell you if that ball had been handled well by Nava then Bogarts would have been out at second base with a clean throw right but he never stopped going around the first base bag. A little slider or did he keep his head down. Throws it off that wall. Unfortunately Daniel Nava cannot. Secure the ball in enough time, but you're right, Bogarts. He was going two all the way. I think you, by rule, you have to give him a double. Yeah, there's a double for Xander Bogarts. That's his 12th of the year. And Moreland fouls it back to the screen, 0 and 1. Goes and they've got him picked off uh, as long as the throw is clean. And Michael Falco was able to track him down. He'll go down as a caught stealing. One five and two away. You want your pitcher to get rid of it as soon as possible. Get the guy going at full steam. Right there, he's at full steam ahead. Get rid of it. Let the infielders take care of the rest. We've seen that play happen where the Phillies pitchers have turned back and nothing has happened. There have been many occasions where they have been able to get the base runners. Into the shift, Kendrick backhand sets himself and fires in time to get Moreland. Nice play. It's a long throw. And that's why they practice these throws in the deep outfield. It's a heck of a play there by Howie Kendrick. We're on to the sixth. Cross Philly of the week is probably standing on second base right now. Oduble is putting the month of May in his rearview mirror and steering his way toward an exceptionally productive June. Through the first six days of the month, Herrera compiled 12 hits, all of the extra base hit variety, including 10 doubles, already besting his career high in a month. Pitchers had his number early in the season, but if you mess with El Torito, you get the horns. And it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Oh, 
we go to the top of the sixth inning and Howie Kendrick who is 0 for 1 will lead things off for the Phils. Kendrick has walked he's also grounded out to shortstop. And it's no balls and one strike to him. Pulled down the left field line toward the pole and foul. To that sweet level, and then right on out. <laughs> Bouncing a shortstop, Bogarts takes the clean hop. One out. Seven straight retired by David Price. Time now for our Jeep Stump the Bench trivia quiz answer. Who holds the Red Sox record for most gold gloves by an infielder? Well, I was wrong last night with my answer of Dustin Pedroia, but I'm going to go with him again for the answer to this one. I don't know if you can use them back to back nights. Well, that's my answer. All right. Well, you are right. Four gold gloves. Log back on to Phillies.com to find out if you're the winner of a Phillies prize. Kylie Joseph takes inside. It's one and zero. Dustin Pedroia finally uh, got himself a new glove after using the same glove and having the same glove reworked through college. And through the minor leagues and his first couple of years in Boston, I mean, it was falling apart. But he finally, a couple of years ago, decided that he needed to use a new one. One and two to Tommy Joseph. I used to use a new mitt every month. Go through six minutes a year. What did you do with the old ones when you were done with them? Give them away. Still have a bunch. Down the right field line for Tommy Joseph. On the run is Mookie Betts. This time he won't get it. It'll be a ground rule double. He robbed Tommy Joseph an extra base hit last night. So you're not getting this one. You see Tommy bounce back there. First at bat strikeout swinging second at bat strikeout looking. Gets down to the count again but. Does some damage. Well here is Michael Franco has been on base twice he has singled and walked. He's got the tying run at second base here in the sixth inning. Say this about David Price, he's not afraid to work inside. No. Guess when you pitch in the American League East for as long as he has with the Rays, the Blue Jays, the Red Sox, you have to be able to pitch inside. Two balls, no strikes. Every pitcher has to, it just sets up your other pitches. Amount of velocity that Jamie Moyer had, he still would command the inside part of that plate to righties. Hey. I thought that was a little bit tight. It looked like it was a good pitch on the inner half of the plate. Right side, base hit it to right field. It glanced off Moreland's glove. Tommy Joseph will hold up. And it's a single for Michael Franco to put runners on first and third. 
I thought once it glanced off Moreland's glove, it might give Tommy a chance to score. But it was still hit rather hard. Another hit to right field. Michael saying to Tommy, hey, how do you score on that? Can't risk it there, though. No, not with Mookie Betts' arm. No. Well, here's Michael Saunders. Side one and oh. Michael Saunders is due. 0 for his last 16. And one for his last 18. Back to the screen. One ball, one strike. Opposite way. This might be two. There's one. And Saunders able to leg it out and a run scores, and the game is tied up at three. Well, for a big guy, he does move well up the line. He gets going, and I mean, he can really roll. Yeah. The ball wasn't hit, you know, with a lot of velocity, but still, Tommy Joseph able to score, so a 3 3 game. Decision by Juan Samuel not to send Tommy Joseph Payne off here. It's a good turn all the way around. Saunders just outruns it. Yep. Front of the bag, which is right the right way to do it. And he didn't lunge at the bag. So an RBI for Michael. That's his 20th of the year. And here comes Cameron Rupp, who is 0 for 2. He's flied out and he has struck out. That's four consecutive fastballs that he swung through. I think if you're camera right now, you just got to gear it up, get it going a little bit earlier. You throw something else, so be it. He doesn't. He may not throw him anything else. What I try to do as a catcher. If you had a book on somebody and you executed the pitches without them making the adjustment, stay with it. And he does. 95. It's a foul tip hung on to by Vasquez. Now the side is retired. Six strikeouts for Price, but Saunders' ground ball has tied this game up at three as we go to the home sixth.
presented by Coors Banquet. On this date in 1997, interleague play makes its debut. The Phillies facing the Toronto Blue Jays. Kurt Schilling got the start against Woody Williams in that game. How about Wayne Gomes came in and made his major league debut, and he got the win in the save. Phillies win it 4-3, to three, and interleague play was born. 1997, guys. The Phillies, uh, I think, had hoped at that point that that was a good omen. That's the way things were going to be for them. But like a lot of other National League teams, uh, they haven't had as much success in interleague play as they would like. The Blue Jays and the Red Sox, and even the Orioles before the Nationals came around, they were kind of the natural rivals for the Phils. They would kind of switch off American League with 2,802 2 wins. To the National League's 2482. American League's hit nearly 500 more home runs than the National League. Here's Benintendi, who is one for two with an RBI on a walk, and it's 2 0. Murph was mentioning the draft class that uh, Andrew was part of. Andrew was selected in the seventh round, seventh with the seventh pick in the first round in 2015. And already Dansby Swanson, Alex Bregman, Ben Intendi, they have made it uh, to the major leagues. Ian Happ has made it to the major leagues. I mean, it's turned out to be a, uh, a pretty fruitful first round. That was away. Robbie Scott getting loose in the Red Sox bullpen. Yeah, with uh, David Price over 100 pitches at 103. Carson Fulmer has pitched in eight games for the White Sox. He was also part of that first round. Owens floated out towards shallow left field. Galvis runs back. And makes the catch. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Toyota. Find your favorite model today. Toyota, let's go places. By McDonald's, introducing the new signature crafted recipes at McDonald's. I'm loving it. And by your local Chevrolet dealers. Oh, well, one away. Henley Ramirez is coming up. Struck out in his last at bat, and he's grounded into a double play. Fouls it back, and it's one ball, one strike. He still has a pretty swing, though, doesn't he, Tom? Yeah, his stance right is his stance is totally different. Well, it seems like it's totally different than it was. That one is up over our heads and right smack dab down into the seats. Try to use that good slider he got him out with last at bat. Five ball right center field. And it should be playable for Altair. On the edge of the track, makes the catch. And now two outs, and Jackie Bradley's coming up. 
Bradley has doubled and scored. He's also flat out to right field. Cameron put the slider down. Lively shook to a fastball. Get just a little bit more extension on that, but good enough to get Hanley out. To left field again, Daniel Nava on the run, scampers over, puts it away, and a 1 2 3 inning for Ben Lively, who's allowed three runs in six innings here tonight. We'll move to the seventh inning. Phillies and the Red Sox tied at three. Delaware Valley Honda Dealers game summary. Well, the Red Sox jumped down to a 2 0 lead, but Aaron Altair's two run home run in the third is 10th of the year. Tied this ball game up. The Red Sox then got one back in the bottom of the third. But the Bills tied it up in the sixth on a ground out by Michael Saunders, and they say goodbye to David Price, who is done after six innings tonight. Six innings, four hits, three earned runs for Price. Four walks and six strikeouts, so he's walked four now in back to back games. And now Robbie Scott with an ERA of 1.84. Scott pitched a scoreless inning last night for the Red Sox. He did walk one batter, he walked Michael Franco. And he'll face Freddy Galvis to start things off. Red Sox bullpen has been one of the best in baseball uh, this year. They kind of changed the way they they've approached things. They they've found guys that have some velocity. Now Scott's not necessarily in that category. He can throw it in the 90s. But guys like Craig Kimbrell, Joe Kelly, who we'll probably see in the next inning. Mm -hmm. you know, even Barnes last night. It was 96. Mm -hmm. That's Blaine Boyer warming up in the bullpen. He's kind of reinvented himself over the last couple of years. One ball, one strike to Galvis. But their earned run average is 2.97, which is fourth best in Major League Baseball. Not just the American League, Major League Baseball. The Indians have the top bullpen at 2.36, then the Dodgers, the Yankees, and the Red Sox. Just one earned run in 16 and a third innings during this homestand. Man, was Matt Barnes teetering last night? Yes, he was. 
Phillies just could not get a run home though in the last couple of innings. Galvis does not offer at it, and it's three and two. I mentioned it last night, but you can see how Scott would be tough on lefties. A bit of a crossfire, stepping more towards first base, and delivers the baseball. Three quarter. I would say it's sidearm, right? Say more three quarter. The liner foul. Like a rock skipping across a pond. He caught it, but it caught somebody else before it got to him. Opposite way for Galvis. Mookie bats toward the line and makes the catch. And back to the top of the order for Odubel. We'll see what happens against a lefty here. As Herrera will bat. After going 0 for 2 with a walk against David Price. Herrera lined out softly against Robbie Ray. Robbie Scott, I should say, in last night's game. We'll see Robbie Ray this weekend. You're just looking down, it looks like that lady caught one off the wrist. Yeah. He was in a lot of pain. Yeah. Hit it 11 consecutive games. The young guy caught it off the, uh, looked like it deflected off a wire. Down even more mm -hmm. when he delivered that pitch. Fouls it back to the screen. A pretty good swing at that one. It's a six pitch at bat. This will be number seven here. Perfect time for one of those doubles. Yeah, double with 13 extra base hits during this month. That's three more than Aaron Hicks of the Yankees, who has got ten. Bouncer towards shortstop. 
And Oduble hustling, but then pulls up shop at the end as Bogarts throws him out. Two outs. And Daniel Navas coming up. Hitless in three at bats. This will be Robbie Scott's last hitter, no matter what. Aaron Altair on deck. One strike. By the way, if you see what's going on with the Cardinals after they swept out the Phillies, they won the first game against the Brewers in their series. Now they're find them now they find themselves just a game and a half out of first place. Cubs are a game out. Brewers are leading tonight's ball game by a 4-2 score. One ball, one strike to Nava. Outside, two and one. What do you think that division NL Central ranks. Boy it's hard to say. I, you know I, I was. I know the Cardinals swept the Phillies out. I wasn't overwhelmingly impressed with them. Neither was I. Compared to. The teams in the West. I was not impressed with the Cubs. Far powers there. I don't know if the Cubs have the pitching. Three balls one strike. But I think if you compare it to the National League East. You know, they're probably. Pretty close. Yeah. I mean, the West is the West is the leader of the pack. At least it seems that way. I mean, I think we were all impressed with the Rockies, the Dodgers. We'll see the Diamondbacks this weekend. How about there's only five teams in the National League that are over 500? I was looking at that today. Isn't that amazing. I thought it was a misprint. <laughs> five. And a liner to left field, and it will sit for a base hit. And Nav is aboard with a two-out single here in the seventh inning. And here comes Blaine Boyer. John Farrell pops out of the dugout. He's going to bring the right hander in to face Aaron Altair. So we've got a pitching change here at Fenway Park. The Phillies and the Red Sox are tied up at three. John Farrell is going to the righty, take the lefty out, and we'll be back to Fenway right after this. Sixth inning, it was Michael Saunders at the plate. A harmless ground ball to third base, but Saunders showing his wheels. 5 4 3, not in time. Tommy Joseph scored to tie this ball game up. Good that, speed by Michael Saunders. That is your Toyota turning point. That is where we stand right now in the seventh inning with two men down, and Blaine Boyer will be the new pitcher, the veteran right hander. 
Hoyer has a 2.70 ERA in eight games. He originally was a, a starting pitcher when he came to the big leagues. Terra takes low, one ball, no strikes. Terra's numbers against right handers, he's been good. Overall, hitting 286. Better numbers against righties than lefties. Imperative that Daniel Nava get a good secondary lead. And that Aaron Altera's gap to gap power. If he hits one of those gaps, Nava's got to score with two outs here. Two and two. A couple sliders in different spots is even the count up at two balls, two strikes. Ground ball toward the hole, cut off by Rutledge, who quickly flips it to second. And the inning is over. No runs, a hit, and one man left. It's time to stretch here at Fenway. Believes in the Red Sox tied at three. Chevrolet Father's Appreciation Day. And Hawaiian shirts are given out to men 15 and older. Tickets can be purchased uh, by going to Phillies.com. In fact, if you want to check out this upcoming homestand, and it's a long one for the Phillies. Two against the Red Sox, then the Diamondbacks, an off day, and then the Cardinals are in town. You can go to Phillies.com. They'll have all the information you need. Also tomorrow, a reminder. Phillies are joining Citizens Bank and hosting our fans feeding families day in food drive to benefit Phil Phil abundance trying to collect as much food as we can to help families in need this summer. If you'd like to contribute to this cause please bring a donation of non perishable boxes uh, to the ballpark non perishable foods to the boxes at the ballpark. Peter Brian Ramos will used at some point in this game as lively is trying to get through this seventh inning one ball two strikes to Josh Rutledge Brown 
ground ball to second base. Howie Kendrick up with it. Now Vasquez. Lively trying to get to seven innings for the third consecutive start. Coming into tonight's ball game, he had a lot of four and runs and 14 innings of work. Third base off the glove of Michael Franco. Vasquez is aboard with one man down. It brings Mookie Betts to the plate. It's going to go down as an error. It doesn't seem to be quick moving to this to his left. The ball went right off the top of that or uh, the side of the glove. It wasn't as if it was out of his reach. It has been scored a base hit. We have really seen some friendly scoring on this road trip. It's not a hit. Wow. One ball and no strikes to Mookie Betts. Foul the way one and one. I know you talked to Freddie Galvis. He likes this infield. Loves it. I said it's pretty fast. He said no, it's not that fast. He said ours is faster at CBP. But what he likes about this infield is that it stays damp the whole game. He said it never got dried out. He said the only thing he doesn't like is the fact that Xander Bogarts wears. A molded spike, and he said the holes are a bit bigger out there. At the knees, one and two. Yeah, so the uh, regular metal spikes are a little thinner yes. than the molded ones. So the holes in front of Freddie are, are a little choppier. Side two and two. So the ball Jackie Bradley Jr. hit last night off Howie Kendrick that went down as an error. A ball that was scolded to Howie Kendrick's backhand that went down as an error and that one goes down as a hit. Makes sense. Yeah, I think there's been some erratic scoring. This road trip. Pitches now for Ben Lively. Two balls, two strikes, one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Phillies and the Red Sox tied up at three. Fly ball, center field, not deep. Herrera's coming in. And two away. Dustin Pedroia do up. by Cameron slider has been so effective for Ben Lively tonight he'll be get boots there with another or bets I should say with a, another slider I mean coming out we heard this the curveball was the secondary best pitch He's able to throw both effectively though High 
out with that pitch. It's two and oh. If he doesn't get Pedroia, this may be his last batter. He challenged him. Pedroia trying to hit that one over the Sitco side. <laughs> Left field. One strike. Xander Bogarts is on deck. Here we are in the bottom of the seventh inning. Red Sox jumped out to a two nothing lead to start. Billy's tied it on the home run by Altair. Sox retook the lead on the home run by Mitch Moreland. And now the 3 1 pitch. So we're going to miss 3 and 2. Vasquez will be off and running from first base. Cameron Rupp just reminded everybody. Right here, Ben. Fouls it back. You know, Vasquez is really getting an early jump, at least that time he did. Lively steps off and then looks over to first. He might be able to get him. Ruben just said something to him at first. Got a breaking ball swung out and missed. Rupp is going to fire to first base. Strikeout is complete. No runs. One hit and one man left. Three consecutive starts for Ben Lively where he's got seven innings or more in his first three games. Billy Champion the last one to do it back in 1969. Local Ford store. Check out every new Ford car, truck, and SUV crossover at buyfordnow.com today. Well, this game remains tied as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Ben Lively, seven innings, eight hits, three runs, 108 pitches. He walked two, he struck out two. I would think Pete's going to go to the bullpen with 108 pitches under his belt. 
We mentioned that note about Billy Champion. He's the first pitcher or starting pitcher since Billy Champion to uh, throw seven innings and allow three runs or less in those seven innings. And his first three starts, Billy Champion did it in 1969. Boy, he really gutted it out here tonight. Man, especially after that first inning. Yep. Howie Kendrick leads it off against Blaine Boyer. Boyer got the last out in the seventh. Now he starts the eighth inning. I get him a W. And a liner into left center field, a base hit for Kendrick. It's his first hit of the night. Hitting 370 since he came off the disabled list. About time, Howie. <laughs> I mean, it's at that point where you just expect a bullet somewhere every time up. Well, now Fernando Abad is warming up in the bullpen. Tommy Joseph, the hitter. Tommy extended his hitting streak tonight. He is one for three. He is now hitting nine straight. Doubled and scored his last time. Now you know why Mike Sosha said that Howie Kendrick was such an instrumental part of his ball club for all those years in Anaheim. He was a great extra piece for all those stars that mm -hmm. they had. Side one ball, no strikes. Where it goes to that big leg kick again, you might see how we take off. A little abbreviated move there, or motion to the plate, I should say. It's two and oh. Shaq warming up along with Ramos. Shaq only threw seven pitches in last night's ball game. Oh. Fastballs thus far to Tommy. Came in to face Aaron Altair and threw a bunch of sliders. Pretty short lead for Kendrick. A look, it's going to be back into the crowd. The runner up to the ball game, Marshall Harris, Ricky Metallico are standing by for Phillies post game live, presented by Cure Auto Insurance. We'll talk about Ben Lively and his seven innings tonight, and how well he was, how well he pitched. Aaron Altair's two run home run, and hopefully talk about a Phillies victory to finish up this road trip they've only won the two games the first two games of this trip they're two and six so we're going to miss and Joseph strikes out third time tonight Tommy's gone down and one out now for Michael Franco good slider there.
hard, too, at 88 miles an hour. Boyer's been around 93, 94. Tight spin on that one. That one's hit well out toward left field. Does it have enough height? It's off the top of the monster over the head of Benintendi. Rounding third, heading for home is Howie Kendrick. The throw to the plate is in time. He threw it on a fly. And there are two outs here in the eighth inning. What's crazy is earlier today, Ruben Amaro had Benintendi out there along with Chris Young. And he hit ball after ball to him, and they were airing it out just like Ben Attendee did towards home plate. That throw right on the money. Man, that ball was hit hard. Just missed going out by what, Tom, a foot and a half? Uh, uh, that was it. I don't know if Howie Kendrick slowed up at all going to third base, but Ben Attendee did a great job recovering. And staying composed. Boyer loved it. And now two outs here in the eighth inning. The Phillies are in the mode of taking chances because of the struggles. And I think that's what Juan Samuel did was take a chance there to try to get him to come home. Thinking about, you know, Saunders and Rupp are the scheduled hitters next. And no offense to those guys, but they haven't really been lighting it up. But the night Mike Hells had three for three with a walk. They're going to walk Saunders intentionally. If I'm Cameron Rupp right now, I'm selling out on the fastball. If he throws you something slower, hopefully you can react. But you got to sell out. He swung through six. Fastballs in a row. Mind you, they're off David Price, but he's no longer the high 90s guy. Hopefully, Cameron can get that, generate a little bit of bat speed right now and get to Boyer. Balls one strike to Rupp. Bouncer back toward the middle, off Boyer into shallow center field. They throw to second, not in time, and everybody is safe. Hey. And the Phillies have the bases loaded. Saunders again with his legs. Beating that one out, prolonging the inning. Go down as a base hit for Cameron Rupp. Really a heads up play by Bogarts. And Pedroia just to go to the bag. I assume that Bogarts is going to try and throw that ball to first base. Well, now the bases are loaded for Freddie Galvis. Carl Willis is coming out. See if Freddie Gallus can come through now. Are these friendly reminders right now for what Freddie Galvis can do? Yes. Also, just go settle Boyer down. Love to see that scoreless inning stretch by the Boston Red Sox bullpen come to end right now.
takes on the outside corner. 0 and 1. Delayed call there, wasn't it? Yeah, it looked like it was out of the strike zone. Trying to get a run home for Ben Lively. Here in the bottom half or top half of the eighth inning. He's gone seven innings tonight. Galvis fouls off the 94 mile an hour heater. Outstanding defensive play by Andrew Benatendi helps the Red Sox cause. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth inning, tied at three. To the bottom of the eighth inning. The reason we're tied, Michael Franco hit this ball off the green monster. It's our Hyundai defensive play of the game. And this is going out by, well, inches. Benetendi picks it up, fires it home in the air. The Vasquez at home plate. Good aggressive tag there to get Howie Kendrick at home plate. Warriors pump. That is your Hyundai defensive play of the game brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. Well, they do Ry Ramos will take over here in the eighth inning. There was some question as to whether that ball uh, went over that white line or hit the white line on the green monster. The Phillies didn't challenge it or take a look at it. Bogarts swings at the first pitch and pops it up foul territory first base side Tommy Joseph is over. And makes the catch. So one out here in the eighth inning. up 
Orleans homer to here tonight. And he takes a strike. Out of play, and it's 0-2. You know, just with our naked eye looking at that home run, we wondered if it was high enough. It looked like it had it hit just below that line. Right there. Man. It looked like it hit right below it. Here's another look at it. I mean, talk about inches. Two strikes. If it had just gone over that line, yeah. that red line, I thought it used to be white, but over that red line, uh, then it would have been a home run. I mean, it was just a matter of inches. One ball, two strikes to Morwin. On the outside corner, strike three called. Two outs here in the eighth inning. Ben Attendee will be the batter. He's going to get a nice round of applause, I would think, from the sellout crowd. Young you know, man is a good looking player. Got some pretty good movement on that breaking ball tonight. Mm Side three and one. Craig Kimbrell is loosening up in the bullpen. Line drive caught by Michael Franco and a one, two, three, eighth inning for Ramos. We have completed eight here at Fenway Park. Top of the order due up when we get back for the ninth.
Presented by T-Mobile, the Texas Rangers a little bit closer to getting one of their aces back. Cole Hamels is coming back from that right oblique strain. Well, he did throw in the bullpen today, two sets of 15 pitches. He is said to have thrown all of his pitches during those uh, two sets of 15, and he came out feeling pretty good. So they're not sure that he'll throw another bullpen session, guys. They did say that if he feels pretty good in the next couple of days, the next step may be a minor league rehab start for Cole Hamels. So he is getting closer to coming back. And the Mets, well, they simply cannot catch a break when it comes to injury as Dribble Cabrera, their shortstop, headed back to the disabled list with an injured thumb. The same thumb that sent him to the disabled list a couple of weeks ago. He returned from the DL. He did play. He actually homered a couple of times, but he cannot swing the bat from the right side. It is causing him all kinds of pain, so they decided they're going to shut him down again, send him back to the disabled list, and uh, see what they can do to heal him up and get him back 100%. But it's going to be a little bit of a while for as Dribble Cabrera, guys. Yeah, the Mets find themselves uh, nine and a half games out in the National League East. Here's Craig Kimbrell in his 28th ball game, a 0.94 earned run average. And the first pitch to Herrera is in there. It's 0-1. Odubel is 0 for 3. He walked in the third inning. He's reached base in 11 straight. He has a base hit in 11 straight games. That'll be out of play, and it's 0 and 2. Duba looked like he was staring down that foul ball. Bouncer over the mound. Bogarts charges, throws. Boy, he got rid of that fast. In time to get Oduble Herrera. One out. We have two really good shortstops in the, this game with Galvis and Bogarts. That is a big league play. I wanted that ball to take one more hop, but you're right, Tom. He gets rid of that so quickly. In his glove and out of it, and he was able to put something on it. Another look here, and that was a good play. Right on the money to Moreland. Well, Daniel Nava will get a chance to bat left handed here against Craig Kimbrell. Last night was the 27th game for Kimbrell. He has pitched now in 16 games. Here at Fenway Park is not allowed to run. But again, his ERA is under 1, 0 0.93. He's been very stingy. He is 28 for 28 in save opportunities here at Fenway. This is not a safe situation, but he's trying to get this game to the bottom of the ninth inning. Two for their last 48. That is. The ball's two strikes to Nava. And he swings through a 98 mile an hour heater. And two away here in the top of the ninth inning. Their last 49. Some good movement on it too, away from Nava. Those are beyond video game numbers. <laughs> this guy's had a lot of good years in his major league career, but he's on his way to one of his best. 22 career saves against the Phillies, an ERA of 0.79 against them.
everybody in the National League East was happy when he was shipped out to San Diego and then eventually went to the American League here with the Red Sox. Outside. It's hard to believe someone like Kimbrell. He was the 96th overall pick. 96th. Just to show you, it's not an exact science in no, baseball. I think the size. Is, I mean, he is a, a a smaller guy. That may have had something to do with it. That one's over our heads. Didn't come back. Swing and a miss, two and two. He could probably get by with just throwing that heater at 98 miles an hour, 97 miles an hour with a little bit of cut to it. But then he mixes in the slider. Two balls, two strikes to Aaron Altair. Side of the infield started to move. They didn't have a clear view of where that pitch was. Pitch cast it tells it's a little outside. Just a little outside. Way outside. <laughs> Three balls, two strikes. Opposite way, Morwin with a diving stop. Kimbrell's there to cover in time to get Altair. That's a fine play, and it's a 1 2 3 top of the ninth inning for the Phillies. That means we'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. A little defense. We're tied up at three. Hanley Ramirez due to lead it off. Youngsters 14 and under will receive the WB Mason collectible truck. Get your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Again, a lot of opportunities to come out and see the Phils this week. This turns out to be a long homestand. It begins tomorrow with the Red Sox coming to town for two games. First, though, the Phillies have to uh, finish them off here. As we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, and we are tied up at three. Ramos will face Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez is 0 for 3. He's hit it to a double play. He has struck out and he's flied out to right field. And he 
fouls the first pitch back it's 0 and 1. It's truly amazing how the hitters these days they just have zero fear in the box. I mean zero. Oh. Were you afraid? Wasn't afraid but I mean they just go up there that first swing there by Hanley was. Just came unglued. Yeah. I guess he figured he was getting a fastball to start it off. So he's going to miss he's down on three pitches. Four in a row retired by Ramos. And here's Jackie Bradley. He has doubled. He's flied out to right field. He's flied out to left field today. Pablo Sandoval has come out on deck to pinch hit. Strike. Two and one. Bouncer back toward the middle. It'll hook over to the right side where Freddie Galvis is shaded. And 6 3 of the put out, two outs, five in a row retired by Ramos. And now Sandoval's coming up. Side one and And ball four. So Sandoval draws a walk. Now Vasquez is coming up. Look at a pinch run for Sandoval. Devin Marrero is going to come on to pinch run for him. It did last night. Yeah, Marrero wound up scoring the game winning run last night. That the defense is aligned. Oh. 96 
six on the outer edge. So what he told Tommy there was don't come off too far. I Meaning don't give up the line because the double a double could score Marrero from first base. Yeah, the way the ball could roll down if uh, Altair, depending on his angle to get down there. Oh, and two. So if there's a ball hit down the line, basically all Tommy has to do is fall to his left. It's sharply right at Freddie Galvis, and we will go extra innings for a second consecutive night here at Fenway Park. No runs, no hits, and one man left. On to the tenth inning. The game. In the fifth inning, the bat of Mitch Moreland, Ben Lively, dead central. That gave the Red Sox a 3 2 lead at the time. Then the sixth inning, Michael Saunders, harmless ground ball to third base, not able to complete the 5 4 3 around the horn double play. Billy's tied it up 3 3. They are your WB Mason deliveries of the game. All right, so for a second straight night, we go to the uh, top half of the 10th inning. And the Red Sox uh, will make some adjustments. As Devin Marrero will take over at third after pinch running for Pablo Sandoval. Heath Embry will be the new pitcher for the Red Sox. 0 oh 2 with an ERA of 3.90. Strikeouts in 30 innings of work. He has allowed, though, 37 hits, including four home runs. And Howie Kendrick will lead it off. First pitch is inside, 1 0. Guy throws hard. He's got a little quirkiness just watching some video of him uh, the other day. I mean, there's an awful lot before he finally gets set. Look at the way he gets his foot back on the rubber. Mm -hmm. Taps the ball a few times into the glove. First batter faces him, and they're hitting 429 with two home runs. Bouncer to the right side. Moreland gets there and then throws to Embry covering. What out? So we put that down as 4 3 or 4 1. <laughs> Moreland's looking at the video thinking, hmm, I probably should have just let my four time gold glove second baseman get it. Embry was a little late to get rolling, but he was able to recover. Can pick it at first base, though. Going oh, one. 
run to Tommy Joseph. One ball and one strike. Phillies have Jenmar Gomez warming up for the bullpen. That one's off the end of the bat. That's going to drop into center field. Another hit for Tommy Joseph, his second of the day. And it's his fourth hit in this series. Oh, with the extra inning games, these guys have gotten a chance to uh, get some at bats. There's Jenmar. And here's Ty Kelly coming out to pinch run for Tommy Joseph. All right, so here's a change then. Mm -hmm. The way Pete McCannon thought about it yesterday. Right. You know, he put Ty Kelly into pinch run eventually, but when the runner was over third base, when Tommy Joseph was at third base. But last night, and he said this, when the ball was hit to the gap that Mookie Betts cut off, he, he thought to himself, oh man, I should have pinch run Ty Kelly there. But then he looked at it after the game and said, you know, I don't know if Ty Kelly would have scored, but. There was still that element of doubt in his mind, so now he's made the adjustment and put Ty Kelly in. Michael Franco, the hitter. Franco's had a good night. Franco's doubled off the Green Monster, and he has singled twice. Pick the first here. Michael just stays with that approach and rock solid last couple games. That's flying through the zone. Outside two and oh. Take it all the way, and it's two and one. I shouldn't say he's taking all the way. I just don't think that was in the spot that he wanted to take a hack at it. He probably was looking middle in, mm -hmm. and that was middle away. See Ty Kelly get a little bit farther out there. You've already seen Henry's move. It's not a good one. Where he's at now, he can basically just fall over and put his hand on the bag. Get out there a little bit. Could be the difference between scoring or not scoring. That one's hit well out toward the monster once again. It'll clank off it. Ben Attendi has it. He'll throw to second base to keep Franco at first. And the Phillies have first and third with one man down, and Michael Michael Franco is starting to stir a little bit offensively. Another well-struck ball. That's a four-hit night for Franco. And Shame to say that that the monster sometimes it giveth, sometimes it taketh away. I think he may have two home runs in any other ballpark. How hard these last two balls have been hit. to see that extension. He's playing Pepper with a monster. Well now first and third for Saunders with one man down. Carl Willis back out to the mound to talk to his right hander.
to show you though how many at bats Mike Hell's had. Going four for four, his batting average has only jumped 14 points. Now up to 228. Think about where it was, you know, just a couple of days ago. He was at 208 and then went one for four. In the last game against the Cardinals. Saunders takes inside one and oh. Sox have adjusted their infield. They've got Bogarts playing over near third base and Marrero at second base. Balls pop foul. And we'll find the seats. That girl right on top of her head. Is she wearing a helmet? No. Talked about all the hits Henry's given up to this inning. Let's we'll see one or two more. Way outside, three and one. Ty Kelly's over at third, pitch running for Tommy Joseph, who singled with one man down. Michael Franco's over at first. Cameron Rupp waiting on deck. Here in the tenth inning, Cameron Rupp is coming up. Well, that is a huge strikeout for Henry. Sure is. He just reared back, and here you go. Cameron had a single his last time up. He's one for four in this ball game. Swing and a miss. A little high heat. You may not see anything other than a fastball again. Climb the ladder a little bit. Seven with runners in scoring position. During the six game losing streak, their numbers have been way down. Runners on first and third. The 0 2 pitch coming to Cameron Rupp. Check swing off the glove. Now Vasquez, and it's now one and two. Pretty close to being a good pitch, wasn't it? It was. Vasquez is. Boxed it. So 96 too. It looked like it. Uh, I mean, I, 
I thought it caught bottom of the zone. Get it going, Cam. Outside, two and two. 98. Next couple of days for the Phillies fans. Got one of the old school jersey. 2 2 pitch to Cameron Ruff. And that one has floated down the right field line. Mookie Betts on the run toward the crowd, reaches over and makes the catch. And he hangs on, and the inning is over. Embry works out of the jam. No runs, two hits, two men left, and Mookie Betts. He really understands the small foul territory down the right field line with a little help from his friend. Defense, Howie Kendrick is on to play first base, moving from second base over to first. Ty Kelly, who pinch ran for Tommy Joseph, stays in the ball game. He's at second. And Jenmar Gomez in his 16th game, an ERA of 8.20. Got the job that Edubry Ramos did. Two innings, no runs, no hits, two strikeouts, just the one walk. The, I guess the, the theory is that either they're saving Nishak to close, which I don't think they would because Naris is warming up, or maybe he just couldn't get loose because he warmed up earlier. I would think that he would be in, in this spot. Yes, no? Unless he couldn't get up again. Here's Mookie Betts to lead it off, and he'll take a strike 0 1. I say that only because there was that game earlier this year where he, he couldn't get loose after he had warmed up. There's Naris. He's been warming up a couple times. One ball, one strike. Pitch just missed down in the zone to Mookie Betts, who is 0 for 4 tonight. After going 4 for 5 last night, there's Pat Nishek. So good for the Phillies this year. Up on it. With a strong throw throws out bats one out here in the tenth inning. A reminder tomorrow we'll be at Citizens Bank Park, 7 o'clock on CSN. Kevin Otis, 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 Ot
25 gets everything rolling at 630. You're going to be on the pregame show tomorrow, Ben? Not till Friday. Not till Friday. Guys are still waiting for Philly's postgame live presented by Cure Auto Insurance. That's coming up at the end of this ball game. Here's Pedroia who walked it off last night with an RBI single. His second career walk off. In the dirt. One ball, one strike. Second hit of the night. And now Xander Bogarts is coming up. Bogarts is two for four in this ball game. He came into this game hitless in his last ten at bats. The knees 0 and 1. Jim Mar has three wins out of the bullpen for the Phils. Last time he pitched was on the 10th against the, the Cardinals, and he allowed three earned runs. That one is a rocket foul. Up Lance Barrett. Seriously. Third base umpire. I did ask Sammy today about that foul ball that Odubel hit first night in last night. And he said that one would have hurt mm. a lot. And you said to him. I said, no way. I said you made an iron. Yeah. He said, no, no, no. Bouncer toward the hole, and base hit it to left field. Marco seemed to be a little upset because he was shaded toward the line a little bit. So that means the winning run for the Red Sox is in second base with one man down, and Bogarts has a three hit night. Really nothing Mike Kell could do with that. Now, if you see where Mike Kell is right here, he would have to go too far this way, right? Ball's hit. Chance. I think if he's straight up, I don't know if he catches that ball. I, I would agree with you on that. Ball had a lot of top spin on it. So now Mitch Moreland, who homered earlier in the ball game, that was back in the third. Up and it's 0 and 1. Billy's lefty out of the bullpen right now is uh, Adam Morgan, but he's their long man. 
They're thinking about a, a lefty to face Mitch Moreland. The thought is, though, is that Jenmar would utilize his changeup, which he did on the first pitch. Mm -hmm. The lefty the Phillies had in the, the bullpen for most of the year, Joel Rodriguez, was traded to the Texas Rangers earlier today. Cash considerations. No balls, two strikes. The change up and it remains 0 and 2. Serves it down the left field line. Long run for Nava. And out of play. Be careful. We're going to have the same play we had last night. And now a word with Rupp and Jenmar Gomez. Two pitch coming from Gomez. Another tapper foul. Well, Moreland had this kind of a bat in his first time up, then was hit by the pitch. Everything is down and away to Mitch Moreland. That spot the pitching. Credit for just getting a piece of that one. Tear very shallow. I really want to cut that run down. See Oduble right here, Aaron Altair right here. They are really close to that infield. You can see the ball in the gap for sure. Another tamper foul. Staying alive on that changeup. It remains one and two to Moreland. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat. He's fouled four balls off. Runners lead off first and second. A 3 3 game. Swing and a miss. He finally got him. And Moreland is down on strikes. Now been attending. Two runners on base. This kid, this kid has been eye opening. Let's see the pitch sequence to Moreland. There's a change up, heater, heater, change up, change up a hard one at 87, 89, another sinker away. Change up. Finally get some of that change up in the dirt. I'm not gonna give in.
Jeff outside one ball one strike. Ben attendee you have to think to yourself. I know he's going to pitch me the same way. That he just pitched Mitch Moreland. You just stay on that side of the plate until you got the two strikes. Tapper over to the third base side. Bronco charges and he'll hold on to it. Now they've got Pedroia who slipped going around third and he is tagged out. And the inning is over. Dustin Pedroia slipped going around the third base bag. And we will head to the 11th inning here at Fenway Park. He comes up limping. Heads up play by Michael Franco. He just tangled up his feet and fell down. We'll go to the 11th. Face right now, but he was mad as he went back to the dugout. He and John Farrell were talking, and he was pointing out toward the third base area. I don't know if he was mad about the uh, the, the cutout that caused him to slip. It didn't look like the cutout caused him to slip. I don't know if Ryan Butterfield maybe told him to go, but he was definitely mad at something. It didn't seem like he was mad at himself for making the mistake, but he definitely seemed like he was mad at something. I mean, he was feisty. He was. So there he is right there. Takes the step. And falls down. He tangled up his feet. Maybe Brian Butterfield told him to go. And maybe that's what angered him. I don't think he'd show up as coach like that. But you never know. Well, he did wait until he got in the dugout. Nice of him. Yeah. But he was fired up. All right, so here's Freddie Galvis. Fernando Abad is the new pitcher for the Red Sox. Here at the top of the 11th inning, and Galvis takes oh. a strike. Abad in his 20th game, a 3.12 earned run average. Galvis takes outside, and it's one and one. Like last night, the Phillies have had base runners against the Red Sox bullpen. Tapper to first base. Moreland's got it, and he'll take it over to the bag. Galvis retired, one out here in the 11th inning. And back to the top of the order for Odubel Herrera. Well, Ben Lively went the first seven innings for the Phillies. For the Red Sox, it was David Price who went the first six innings. Since then, the Phils have gotten two innings from Ramos, one inning from Gomez. And the Red Sox have gotten two thirds from Scott, one into the third from Boyer. Kimbrell pitched a scoreless inning. 
So did Embry, even though he allowed some base runners, and now it's a bond. Down it away, one ball and no strikes to Herrera. Just a little bit for Odubel Herrera there. It's not what I'm looking for, 2 0. 2 0 for Charlie. He threw a 2 0 hook. I can't imagine him throwing a 3 1 hook. Just dead red if I'm a double. Double fouls the 3 1 pitch back. So he did make a nice catch in the, just above the State Street Pavilion. Two outs here in the eleventh inning. And that'll leave it for Daniel Nava. Back to that big curveball. Strike. Right at the top of the zone. Got to figure it's not going to get three fastballs in a row. All right, so Nava has a base hit tonight. He's one for five. Way one and one. That 
after Nava, it's Aaron Altair. Meanwhile, for the Red Sox in their half of the 11th inning, Hanley Ramirez, Jackie Bradley, and Devin Marrero. Those are the scheduled hitters. Got a little precipitation here, Tom. We expected that there might be a little more rain coming at some point. Grounds crew, head groundskeeper, was out a couple of different times. Outside, two and one. Nava takes a breaking ball. Bot's got some pretty good movement on that breaking ball tonight. Veteran Fernando Abad. He's been around for a while. A very deliberate left-hander. Nava's taking his time getting back in the box. Two balls and two strikes. With two outs here at the top of the 11th inning. That went way upstairs. Down with two men down. Two out walks. And he'll pass it on to Aaron Altair. Abad now with a trip to the mound by Vasquez. Abad is the sixth pitcher used tonight by the Red Sox. Phillies look like they're going to go with uh, Jedmar Gomez again if the game is still tied going to the bottom of the 11th inning. If they want to take a lead. Uh, it'll be Hector Naris. Here's Altair back in the third inning. This is a pretty sweet swing. Tie the game up. A little cutter inside from David Price. 410 feet. I'm thinking it went a bit farther than that, Tom. Like you said it's that would be out no matter where it was. And he hits that one softly to right field. Betts coming in. Pedroia out. It's going to drop for a base hit. Nava goes to third. The throw by Betts is not in time. And that ball got there quickly. And once again, the Phillies have the go ahead run at third base with two men down. And Abba was not in position to back that throw up at third base. The ball gets away from Marrero. A different story. But he unleashes some fury right here, does Mookie Betts. Let her eat. Perfect one hot strike. Fortunately, Daniel Nava was able to get his hand in there too because he kind of slid past the bag or to the right of the bag. Here's Howie Kendrick with runners on first and third. Kendrick has four hits in this series. He walked back in the second. Forgot to lay down the signs on what he's going to do if Altair takes off. I think you got to let your hottest hitter hit here. Last thing you'll do is get thrown out or picked off here at first base. Fouled away at its 0 and 1. You no, know, there's no base open. Aaron Altair, but there still is a base open at second base. Surprise how he's getting anything to hit here. Do you think he'd throw something out of the strike zone and see if he gets himself out? Yeah. Going one now to Kendrick. 
you go. It's upstairs one and one. Ty Kelly is on deck. That's the reason Ben's saying that. Yeah, I mean, nothing against Ty Kelly, but you got the hottest hitter, the hottest hitters in the league up at bat right now, and Howie Kendrick. I wonder what the Phillies would do if they would hit Andres Blanco for Ty Kelly. The bench is rather short. Not in height, just in numbers. Way upstairs, two and one. I think we're flirting with pitch cast here. Yeah. Knock it on the top of it. The new bowl was batting. Mm. Bouncer back toward the middle. And Bogarts has it, steps on the bag, and the inning is over. The Phillies have left four in the last two innings. Abad gets out of a jam here in the 11th, on to the bottom of the 11th inning. Are tied up at three. Jedmar Gomez will continue. Every time the Phillies retire the opposing team, one, two, three. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity. Xfinity X1 will change the way you experience TV. All right, so here is Jedmar after pitching a scoreless tenth. Pitch here in the 11. And he is hit by the pitch, and Ramirez will go to first base. He was too acceptable to Howie's apology, did he? What are you going to do? One ball, no strikes to Jackie Bradley. Bradley doubled his first time up and scored a run. And an opposite field single. That'll put runners on first and second with nobody out. And 
Devin Marrero I would think is going to be up there to bunt. I know we don't often see it in the American League. We didn't see it last night. Neither team did it when they had an opportunity to do it. Sandy Leone actually did bunt. My apologies. Or Marrero did bunt. It was Marrero that butted the number nine spot in the 11th inning. So you can see it again here. All right, Butterfield laid down the signs. Depending on this point, they might have a shot at Hanley. I'd have to think he's bunting right here. Jim Mark can bounce off the mound here. How he's going to be crashing from first base. He shows bunt, takes a strike, 0 and 1. Herrera is the one that scored the game winning run. It was Leon who set him up. Brian Butterfield laying down the signs once again. Runners on first and second. Bunts back toward the mound. Gomez has it, and he had a play at third, and it's in time. Boy, I thought the little bobble in his glove may have cost him. But Hanley Ramirez is out at third base. What do you have to lose? Even if you bobble it, take a shot. Despite the double clutch, throws a fire. Fireball to third base. This is making a play with some conviction right here. Not panicking. Out by plenty. See all the bases. He would have had Marrero at first base. But even if you don't get handling, so be it. Well, now it's Vasquez. Vasquez tonight has two hits, a double, an RBI, and a single back of the seventh inning. Inside and nearly hit him. It's one ball, no strikes. Second inning of relief work for Genmar. Strike seven mile an hour cutter. Vasquez hits it out towards shallow center field. Kelly going out, backpedaling, makes the catch. No infield fly rule was called. Was it a routine play? He wasn't completely settled underneath nope. it. Well, now with two outs, here is Mookie Betts. Ring starts to fall a little harder here in Boston. Lead off first and second. And Betts a check swing foul ball. It's 0 and 1. How nice would that have been? Check swing dribbler back to Jemmar.
Fly ball left field playable. Oh boy the wind's got it too. playable for Navo or Galvis and Galvis is there makes the catch and we will go to the 12th inning here at Fenway Park. Both teams have certainly had opportunities they have not been able to cash in. We'll be back with the top half of the 12th. To Citizens Bank Park tomorrow, the Phils and the Red Sox will begin a two game series in Philadelphia. Get your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Both teams will be zipping down to Philadelphia after this one is over. We move to the top of the 12th inning. 11 innings yesterday, and now 12 innings here tonight at least as the rain continues to fall. Jim Reynolds has been getting some visits from the head groundskeeper periodically with his iPad. Two bullpens have been very good tonight. Phillies bullpen has allowed four hits. The Red Sox bullpen has allowed nine base runners in five innings. Phillies have left eight runners on base against the Red Sox bullpen. Ty Kelly shows but takes a strike. It's 0 1. The eighth inning, perfect example. There were two singles, a double, and an intentional walk. Phillies did not score. It's mm -hmm. hard to do. Kelly hits it to the right side and it's 0 2. Ty Kelly came on to pinch run for Tommy Joseph after Joseph singled in the 10th inning. A line drive toward left field. That's going to be in for a base hit. So Ty Kelly gets the 12th inning rolling. So a leadoff single. And here is Michael Franco, who has been blistering hot tonight. He is four for four. Ty Kelly, that is how you get on top of a high fastball. Franco takes off the outside corner, one and oh. Nobody up in the Red Sox bullpen looks like Andres Blanco is going to come out to hit for Michael Saunders.
two and one. That one drops in. Rocco says yes. A little bit of a hop in his step, doesn't he? That's what four hits will do for you. Take a look at pitch cast. Probably one of those pitches he'd like to have back yeah. again. I'd say. He was sitting on a tee. Two balls, one strike to Franco. Lays off, it's three and one. Vasquez wants to appeal. Home plate umpire did not want to ask for an appeal. Do you send him here, Tom? I'd say no. I would say yes because Mike Kelly has swung a hot bat tonight. It's looked good. Short lead for Ty Kelly. He does not go. And the pitch fouled back. 94 mile an hour fastball. Hey, what if Pete will change his mind here? Kelly doesn't look too comfortable over there at first base. He does not. So maybe you let him run and go to second base? Hits it foul off his foot. And we will start it over again. Three and two with nobody out here in the top of the 12th. Maybe it came back and hit him in the hand after it bounced. Now I think he just got jammed so badly. Hurt that his right thumb, that top hand. Really got tied up there. Ball four. Jeez. Think that one would have hurt? No. Murphy, all right down there, buddy? Quick first step. All good. Did you jump onto the wall? <laughs> There's not much place to jump in here. Yeah, but you got a lot of people down there to protect you. Yes. Tight knit group down here. Yeah. Who you got all everybody down? Who's down there? A lot of, a lot of uh, camera operators, some audio guys, photographers. Yeah. yeah. Bronco lines it again. Any filming those cameras, or are we just going digital? What's that? Any filming those cameras? We just go in digital. No, we're all digital down here. Yeah. Down. <laughs> no film anymore. Sounds like we're stirring down there. What's going on? Is that guy in the blue causing some trouble in front of you? <laughs> it's, uh, it's a rowdy bunch. Yeah. We're having, we're having fun. It's all overtime from here on. <laughs> Three and two to Franco. Runner at first. Fouls it back again. The 11th pitch of the at bat coming up. I think he's going to be able to see it. He just pounded himself in the head. And hit the one in the middle. Two strikes to Franco. And he fouls another one. He is spoiling some pitches here, isn't he? Sure is. Pitch cast, it looks like it's snowing. 
<laughs> Andres will be good and loose when he gets into the box. Franco hits it sharply. Flagged down by Pedroia. Flips to second for one. A double play. What a play by Dustin Pedroia. He did not even let that ball go to his bare hand. He just flipped it with his glove. That's a shame because that ball was hit right on the nose by Michael Franco. Another hard hit ball, but the mound, I think, just kicks it up perfectly to Dustin Pedroia. Bogarts take care of the rest. Done that a lot. Why well, he's got those four gold gloves, Tom? Bogarts did a nice job of just leaping over top of Ty Kelly, who didn't stop. He kept sliding in. All right, so now it's Andres Blanco who will pinch it with two outs and nobody on here in the top of the twelfth inning. Back toward the middle, and Bogarts takes the friendly hop. And he throws out Blanco. The inning is over. Man, does the momentum change from spot to spot, from inning to inning, and moment to moment, Pedroia's play ignites the Red Sox as we go to the bottom of the 12. We go to the bottom half of the 12th inning here at Fenway Park in a 3 3 game. Phillips have had countless opportunities to try to get a run across the plate, but unable to do so. 1 0 with a 3.63 earned run average. And he will face Dustin Pedroia. Pedroia made a fantastic play to help uh, Fernando Abad get through that top of the 12th inning. So here's Pedroia. Inside and nearly hit him. And for a minute it did the way he reacted. It's 96. Oh, well, he got out of the way of that one. Has a break one off, but it's up and in. Two balls, no strikes to Pedroia. Two and one. Oh. Kind of punching a little bit. 
guess after C96, you might clinch a little bit. Just a little. How about the command though to throw it to a breaking ball to Detroit? Fastball hit foul, and it's two and two. At least one of your keys can continue. Outs away. Two balls, two strikes to Pedroia. Check swing, slow roller. Kendrick has it, and he'll take it to the bag. Go one out. And now Xander Bogarts. I'm amazing what that first pitch can do. Look about how comfortable a hitter can be. That was a very uncomfortable at bat. It sure was. You can see it in his body language the whole time. And for a guy who's uber aggressive, like Dustin Pedroia. Talked about how he came out of his shoes earlier against Ben Lively on a 2 0 pitch. Ben Lively started this game with the first seven innings. Adorai Ramos pitched the eighth and the ninth. And Genmar Gomez pitched the tenth and the eleventh inning. And the first pitch to Bogarts runs inside. And now it's Luis Garcia who got the first out here in the twelfth. Side two and zero. Oh. Red Sox. He was celebrating ye yesterday when Dustin Pedroia had the game winning hit. He's been hanging on every pitch. Inside corner. Oh, just apologize for tossing that bat away. John Farrell not pleased with that call. See what Pitchcast says. Steve, right? Although he didn't call the first pitch a strike, and it was in the same spot. Three balls and one strike. Inside, he waited this time. Ball four. Whatever front's coming through is changing a little bit. The wind is really blowing in. Moreland, he didn't need the wind or any kind of help in the third inning. Well, I guess that fastball elevated off Lively. Cam knew it. Ben knew it. Mitch Moreland knew it. So Moreland is one for four. He was hit by a pitch as well earlier in the game. At a 95 mile an hour sinker. He lost his footing, but that ball was by him when he started his swing. Spun and threw over to first base. Off the left field line, and it is off 
the top of the green monster. Bogarts will hold up at third, and it'll be first and third with one man down. Well, that time, the green monster giveth. Ball hit towards the end of the bat, Mitch Moreland. But the good thing is, the double play is still in order. Talking about right now. Good job by Nava again, barehanding it. Well, he took a chance to barehand it with the way the mm -hmm. conditions are right now, the way the rain has been falling. So now Benatendi will be the batter. Bogarts is at third base. Moreland doesn't really matter except for the double play. He's at first base. Bogarts, though, is the key. They walk him to face Ramirez. For the double play in order. He hit into one earlier. Infield is in. First pitch is way outside. One ball, no strikes. Tough play for Cameron Rupp there. That's that pitch sailing up and away. Game on the line. One ball and no strikes. Runners lead off first and third. Hey, Garcia delivers. An attendee over the top of that slider. And it's one and one. Rain starts to fall a little harder. And the wind is picking up a little bit more. Again, the infield creeps in. One ball, one strike. Benatendi hits it down the left field line. It's slicing out of play. Hit the guide wire again and shot down one and two. And into the waiting hands of that young lady. This game is uh, more than four hours old, nearly four and a half hours old. In the 12th with runners on first and third. And the one ball two strike pitch to Benatendi. And a line drive down the right field line. That's going to win the ball game for the Red Sox. A one hop into the stands. A ground rule double. And for the second consecutive night, the Red Sox have won an extra innings as they win it four to three. Cameron Ruff wants Luis Garcia to bounce this pitch. You see him tapping the dirt, tapping the dirt. Just elevates that slider, and Benetton did not miss it. Man. Second double of the night for Benetton. Two RBIs in the game, including the game winner, and he gets the double bubble bucket as his team celebrates for a second consecutive night. Uh, look at Cameron Rupp, just like Ben was saying. Yeah. Get it down, get it down there. Squares it up, and this ball is just a spinner. Ben Attendi knows it. Goes down to ground rule double. Ball game. So back to back wins for the Red Sox over the Phils in extra innings. And for the Phillies, they've now lost seven consecutive games as they lose it tonight, four to three. The Red Sox celebrate once again. We'll be back to wrap things up from Fenway Park right after this.